The Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you today's word for September 15th, 2017. I want to excuse the lighting here. Obviously, I'm not at home in my studio at home, but uh, nonetheless, we're going to bring the word. So uh, this is a message entitled, As Jesus Is. It's part of a series. I've been teaching this series for a while, and this is As Jesus Is, Part 38. I've been teaching from 1 John 4, 16 and 17 the whole time. And I've been adding different things to 1 John 4. So we added a couple of weeks ago, John 14, we went through that. Then we added John 17. We've been looking at John 17 along with 1 John 4, 16, 17 for about two weeks now. So let's go back to it this morning. So this is 1 John 4, 16 and 17. The apostle John said, and we have known and believed the love God has for us. Now, God is love. He that dwells in love dwells in God and God dwells in him. Herein is the love of God made perfect, that we may be able to stand before God on the day of judgment with boldness. For as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Now, in John 17, I'm only going to look at verses 20 through 23. This is part of the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus prayed in John 17. The whole chapter is a prayer. Uh, So, But this is what he said. This is a snippet from the prayer. He said, I pray not only for these followers that, that were standing there listening to him, but for all of those who would believe on me because of their teaching. So he's praying for all the followers of Jesus through the annals of time, which includes me, which includes you. He says, Father, I pray that all who believe in me can be one. You are in me and I am in you. And I pray that they could be one in us. And I dealt with that yesterday. But then he said this, then the world will believe that you sent me. Then, what is the then? What is the if statement to the then? Then the world will know that you sent me when we are one with the Father. I have given them, he went on to say, the glory that you gave me. I gave them this glory so that they can be one, just like you and I are one. Now, I will be in them and you will be in me. So together we will be completely one. Here it is again. Then the world will know that you sent me and that you love them just like you love me, that you love them with the very same love that you love me. What does this mean to you today on this Friday morning as we seek to close out the week strong, head into the weekend strong? I have three things to share with you on today, and I really want to focus in on the statement, then the world will believe that you sent me. He said this twice. The world is going to believe that you sent me when these followers of mine are one with you, just like I was one with you. So here we go. Three things. Number one, open your heart to all Jesus prayed for you to experience. Now, John 17 is Jesus's prayer for the, his followers, his disciples, but not only those who were there were included. So this is Jesus praying for you. You should read this prayer and see what he prayed for you to experience. You should open your heart to everything that Jesus prayed for you to have. Jesus prayed that you would be one with the Father, just like he was one with the Father. He expects us to live in this world, just like he lived in this world. How did Jesus live in this world? He lived his life in this world with this mindset that he thought it not robbery for uh, uh, Paul said in Philippians 2 and 5, to be equal with God. He thought it not robbery for him to be a human that knew that he was walking around with God on the inside of him. That's how we're supposed to live. We are a human conduit of the divine. We're walking around with God on the inside of us. We're supposed to live just like Jesus lived and not just wait till we get to heaven, but we're supposed to do it in this world. Jesus expected us to live a supernatural life in this world, not waiting to some glad morning when you get to heaven. No, you're supposed to live it now in this world. That's why the text says, I keep driving this home, as Jesus is, so are we. Not in heaven, but in this world. Jesus expected us, expects us now to live a supernatural life, knowing that we're in the Father, the Father's in us. Uh, We're living like him. We're living uh, with the with the cognizance, with the reality of knowing that we have God on the inside of us. So God is with us when we walk into every meeting, every ca- conversation, um, all the activity we engage in, no matter what we're facing, we're not facing it alone. We're facing it with God on the inside of us. And when you know that God himself is in you, then the, there's nothing you can't do. Number two, realize that your life is supposed to be living proof of Jesus's life. Now, this is an awesome responsibility. Jesus prayed 
for us to be one with the Father, for the Father to be one with us. And he said that when we get to that point, then people will know that you sent me. This is what Jesus said. People are going to know that you sent me. People are going to know that I am real. People are going to know that I am the Messiah. People are going to know that I am the Son of God because of these people. We, you and I, are supposed to be examples. We're supposed to be proof that Jesus was real. We're supposed to be living proof that there is a God. We're supposed to be living proof that heaven is a reality. We're supposed to show people that Jesus was the son of God and our life is supposed to testify of it. Our life should be a testimony of Jesus's life, but we will never get to that point if we don't see ourselves as one with the father and the father is one with us. If we don't see ourselves as Jesus is in this world. That's why we have to see it. That's why I keep teaching this. That's why this is part 38, and we're going to continue to keep going so that we can see ourselves as Jesus is, so that our lives can be an example of his. Our life can be a testimony of his. Number three, and finally, I only have three quick things on this Friday morning. The third thing is open your heart to God's love. Jesus prayed for us to know that the Father loves us the same way he loved him. Think about that for a minute. Receiving the truth of what I'm saying in this point will change you and it will change you forever. Jesus was praying that we would know that the Father loves us the same way he loved Jesus, with the very same love. The Father loves us with the same love that he loved his own son. And, he, and Jesus is wanting us to open our heart to this reality. God loves you. Look at me for a minute, just to be very clear. God loves you no less than he loved Jesus himself. Now, embracing this is critical because when you open up your heart to the love of God, it is the love of God that opens the door to the supernatural. The only real way that for you to truly embrace a life of no limits, for you to open up your heart, for you to die to your limits and open up your heart to everything that God can do is you have to be convinced that God loves you. Because if you don't know God loves you, then inevitably what's going to happen is you're going to make a mistake and the devil is going to get you to focus on the mistake and he will get you into guilt and shame and condemnation. But God wants you, God knew you was going to make the mistake. God is not holding that over you. God wants you to release that thing. You, you confess it, you receive forgiveness, you forgive yourself and you move on. Why? Because God loves you and God wants to use you because he loves you. God wants to bless you because he loves you. God wants to manifest the supernatural in your life because he loves you and he loves you no less than he loved his own son. And when you get to the point where, yes, I know God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. And I know it. When you know that God loves you with an unconditional love, when you know that God loves you with an everlasting love, when you know that there's nothing you did to cause God to start loving you and nothing you do will make him stop. God loves you. It is then and only then that you truly open up your heart to this life that God, that sent his own son Jesus to die for you to experience. It is the life that he planned for you to have from the foundations of the world. It is a supernatural life and it is open to you because of the love of God. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me in faith from a believing heart. Say this. Say, Father, this is a year of great victory for me. Now, I don't say this because of me. I say this because you live in me. I am one with you. You are one with me. You love me with an everlasting love. You love me the same way you loved your own son. You love me the same way you love Jesus. You love me no less. So I believe the love. I receive the love. I embrace the love. I become the love. Your love opens the door to the supernatural in my life. People will know that Jesus is real because they will see him and experience him in me. As Jesus is, so am I in this world. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. I'm praying that you have a great weekend. 
that you have a great Friday, that you close out the week strong, head into the weekend strong. If you're watching this on Facebook Live, please share this with your friends. Share this on your timeline. Leave a comment. I read all the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and also share this on your social media. As you head into this day, see yourself as one with the Father. Embrace the fact that God loves you no less than he loves Jesus himself. And then enter this day ready to manifest the supernatural, to live your life in such a way that you are proof that there is a God. God bless you.